Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the AI and the Enterprise. Look, uh, you know, I published an article of, uh, a week, 10 days ago, on uh, responding to the pandemic. We talked a little bit about three concepts. How do you respond to it? How do you sustain through it? Then how do you rebound out of it? And since then, I've been getting lots of inputs from yourselves and many of the other CIOs, CTOs, and, and visionaries that I talk to. And what's key in everyone's mind is we're in a time like no other. We have an opportunity to get ourselves set up for the future, and we have to focus on a few things and get it right. Talent clearly is going to be one large area for companies to focus on. Ways of working will completely change in the world and the years to come. And how we harvest the collective intelligence around that and bring that to bear in a meaningful fashion will become the critical success factor for enterprises that go forward and others that aren't. I wanted to tackle this topic in today's discussion. I wanted to bring on board no one other than Gianni Giacomelli. Now, Gianni, if some of you are familiar with uh, him, um, who's actually been on one of these episodes before, comes back to us. And thank you, Gianni. By the way, first off, Gianni, welcome. Thank you for joining us thank you. from the East Coast today. Um, uh, what's interesting about Gianni, by the way, I've known Gianni for years, we're friends, so we have kids about the same age. Um, I work very closely with him. But what's very interesting is he's been spending a a good chunk of his time with uh, MIT on collective intelligence. And Johnny, maybe you can spend a minute just telling us the work you do there, because I think it allows us to uh, to sort of harvest your knowledge and a body of a sort of collective thinking that you are participating in in a very unique way. And so maybe with that, Johnny, just tell us a little bit about what you do uh, in that part of your life. Perfect. And, and Sanjay, thanks for uh, having me back. Um, I have a day job. So day job is uh, chief innovation officer here at uh, Genpax, uh, our 100,000 people, new operating models, new ways of working. And then I have, uh, it's not fully a, a, a night job, but you know, part of my time is at MIT, uh, the Center for Collective Intelligence. We have a, uh, a design lab that we have created with the objective of trying to figure out new methods and design methods for organizational designs that help us harness the collective intelligence of very large networks of people and large network of people combined with machines. So the unit of measure is not the department anymore, is not the, uh, the team anymore, but it's much larger networks of people, even ecosystems at times. How do we design them? Do we have organizational methods that we can use to design them? And that's what the, uh, what the Center for Collective Intelligence uh, looks at. What's been really interesting for me is I've worked closely with you the last uh, year or so now in this kind of dual role that you have is that you're able to sort of come up with concepts and see what's happening at the frontier of sort of that innovation and evolution, uh, you know, across the globe, but then actually apply that into a hundred thousand employee company at speed in real life and then be able to learn. And that, I think that cross leverage has been fantastic. I know for us, but I suspect for your broader interests as well. So, Jenny, let me just uh, uh, come back to the forum today. Um, listen, um, our audience around the globe are digital professionals that are energized, excited, and really looking at how we apply different digital techniques. And as we come back to the current situation and thinking about how do we respond to, how do we sustain our way through, and how do we grow out of it, one of the key questions in people's mind is, you know, personally for me, if I'm a digital uh, engineer or digital professional, you know, what are the learnings for me? And then for us as enterprises, as collective systems, um, what is, what's a good way to take the time right now and instrument ourselves for success in the future? You talked about this idea of four Cs, and I want you to explore that with us a little bit, please. Yeah, I totally, uh, uh, you know, the problem that we have right now is that we have been forced uh, into a, I think it's one of the largest natural experiments in technology adoption of the last, I, I don't know, you know, probably since the last uh, world war. Uh, so we all have now uh, fully distributed environments, at least most of the knowledge workers have been forced to go and work at home using all the tools that we have developed over probably the last uh, 10 years or so. Obviously they're much better than they used to be. And what's interesting is not just the technology, it is, how do you redesign the flow of work um, now that people are out there? And the beauty of that is it's a, no, it's a horrible time. And I think most of us really hate it, but at the same time, it's one of those occasions to, to really change the future, right? We would have never had a change management done that this way in real life. Now we have one. So if you want, I can go into the, uh, the four C's, um, you know, right now. I, can I do want you to talk to us about the four C's and just unpeel them. So, so the idea is we have very large groups of people typically coming together, even when they work in an organizational construct, but there's a normal one. 
we very rarely actually harvest the full collective intelligence of those groups. Because, you know, you know how it is, right? I mean, you talk to the person next to you more, you talk to a person who's close to you in that time zone more, and, you know, this, this habit and, you know, this, this just people behaviors. Yep. But the reality, that's not the collective intelligence of our organizations. It's not the collective intelligence of our organizations, the, the ecosystem of, of our partners. So what if machines helped us call, get to that collective intelligence faster? Humans, the problem with humans is that, first of all, we cannot talk to more than one person really at the same time uh, because we cannot process more than that kind of input. Uh, we also have, you know, you might be familiar with the Dunbar number, right? So we don't have the ability to sustain more than about 150 relation, meaningful relationships at any point in time, right? Um, but machines don't have any of those problems. Machines can actually see everything that happens. They now, yeah. natural language processing, etc. they can actually go extend your powers in a way that human wouldn't be able to do. So the 4C here is literally how do machines support humans human networks in what the human network tries to do. And the four C's are literally are, the first one is curating the knowledge that exists out there that humans produce and also machines somehow produce. The second one is connect people and machines that should be connected to each other because they share some interest. The third one is help those nodes, right? You know, think of a, an immense brain, right? All those nodes now need to collaborate. That's the fourth C. And the last C is the compute, right? Machines are really be good at computing uh, all data that you throw to them, um, machine learning particularly. And so that's the fourth C of- Okay, so let me make so, so collective intelligence is the outcome you're trying to drive. You're saying that there's a framework of four C's that actually allow us to get there. And those are curate, collaborate, connect, and compute, yep. right? Talk to us yeah. about- yeah, in, in the order of uh, first curate, then connect, okay. and then collaborate, and then uh, compute. Good. Okay, so, 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 so curate. So, so I want to set ourselves up for success in the long run. I want to adopt your four Cs. I'm going to pick the first C and the second and third and fourth. Tell me what do I do in the first one? Why is that important? Why is that's, exact, that's exactly right. I mean, the four Cs in the end, they are, they're just trying to identify the work packages that any CEO will need to drive into the organization. So the organization actually gets that collective intelligence harness. So take the, four, the first C. Um, you know, right now, coronavirus, everything that, that, that happens in the world, uh, Kaggle, that many be probably familiar with, um, contest in uh, data science. One of the contests in there is the writing of natural language processing algorithms they literally go and scour throughout the web. They look at all the data sources from research to any other data source around the epidemics, the pandemic, and tries to actually pull together all the relevant information so that the researchers and the governments, et cetera, have the right data points. It's almost like a, a superhuman curation of all the little natural experiments. And you can only do that with a machine. And so you have now literally people writing uh, um, code to improve, you know, the ontologies, the and so the, the really enable the machine to pull the data from millions of data sources, recombine them in a way that people will be able to look together at uh, input and output, so that we can become collectively smarter because somebody somewhere yeah. must have done something right, and we just don't know it. But the machine can help us get there. So, you, so if I got that right, look, data is getting more pervasive and much larger. Kind of the notion of big data in this new age is only gets bigger. I think what you're also saying is, is there's lots of information that exists in different places, and the and the collective uh, power of being able to harvest that is now a big differentiator. But how do you do that? How do you follow so much? And the notion of curation has becomes very important. And if we can use AI and other techniques to curate information and bring it to the right people, I can see what you're saying, which is it makes the knowledge worker much more. Yeah, much more um, effective. So let's get let's get to the next one. Um, what's your second C? So the next one is um, you know the connection of the nodes, right? Uh, connection of the node could be human to human, right? So Sanjay AI Luminary and Jenny looks at the future of work and collective intelligence, and they have a common problem, which is we have a hundred thousand people company that uh, you know flip of a switch, uh, everybody home, right? How do you make that work? And and then Suppose that the two of us didn't know each other, right? 
but suppose that the two of us actually worked on the same Office 365 as it happens, you know, we work on Microsoft environments, etc. cetera. Incre increasingly machines will be able to take us, see what we talk about. Um, so there's a project cortex, which is uh, what um, Microsoft is doing right now, applying uh, knowledge graphs to the, uh, basically the breadcrumbs that uh, each of us produce, right? So SMJ produces a lot of AI related things and, and also process related things, work related things. And I work on other stuff, even if you and I didn't know each other, which, you know, in our case, it's unlikely, but you know, in a large company, there's very often subject matter experts who don't know each other, but even beyond you have ecosystems yeah. where the machine will actually say, Sanjay, you should talk to that Gianni guy because you might actually have things to talk, to talk yeah. about. And machines can do that. Right? Got it. So this is very interesting. I mean, we've been on LinkedIn for a few years now and I get so much engagement from our worldwide audiences and people connect different ideas in what's being discussed. You're actually saying, take it to the next step and use AI algorithms and machines to actually force a connection and bring up sort of this perhaps previously hidden, but increasingly more important connections between people so that knowledge can be combined. Perfect. Let's move to the third one. So the third one is collaboration. So humans can actually read each other's breadcrumbs and we actually may benefit a lot by, you know, I watch a webinar with Sanjay, Sanjay talks about a bunch of stuff and now I think differently about what I do. But just because of the way our individual brains are built, we actually get a lot more value when we talk to each other synchronously, right? Like what we're doing today, we're having a back and forth, you are shaping ideas, my brain reflects on, on, on your words and and shapes my own ideas in ways that I wouldn't have been able to do just by reading what you do. And so the synchronous collaboration is inc incredibly important. Now, the reality is, you know, just post four, so go back 10 years, right? We had some sort of video conferencing, we had some sort of internet connectivity, but the reality is the ability with the tools that we have today to have such a fluid, frictionless, uh, no risk, as in we, we go in, we can connect to each other, irrespective of the bandwidth that we have within limits, it's unprecedented. And we actually take it for granted, but you know, you see my picture, I see your picture, I hear your voice, you hear my voice. There's a lot of artificial intelligence in the background that pretty much disassembles all these sensorial inputs into things that the machine can actually optimize. The picture that I see of you is not the picture, it's not you, it is a pixelation and, and the machine actually decides how much granularity of the pixel, what tones, how many colors, etc., so that you actually do more, the most of, you make the most of the bandwidth that you have. It's huge, right? It allows people to hear each other. So you can actually, now it's just two of us, but you could have 500 people, you could have 5,000 people. And, and so artificial inte intelligence really helps the synchronous connectivity. So what's really interesting in that is, you know, we've always collaborated, but our view of collaboration has been limited by the physical logistics of getting in together in person. I think what you're suggesting is number one, this is time like no other. Number two, the technology is here and now. And number three, if you overlay AI and use that in a meaningfully appropriate fashion, then you have this amazing ability to scale that collaboration. And I think the imperative is now. I think the time is now for companies, enterprises to start thinking about new ways of working around that. What's your fourth C? So fourth C is uh, compute. So we always talk about AI in the context of computing. What I'd really like to think about is what computation should happen so that we understand what drives the, the behavior and the performance of big networks of people. So to just take an example of, you know, we have 100,000 people in the company, you know, you know, day two, you know, they literally disappeared no office, people working from home, and they were working from offices before their supervisor was next to them, I need something, I go to that, that person. Now, literally, we are gone. And that type of work can be quite complicated for people because, you know, they go do things, they make mistakes, uh, you know, they get disengaged, they, they get tired. It's, it's a different type of world. However, we can actually tell from the breadcrumbs that they leave, right? And the beauty with digital is that we leave a bunch of breadcrumbs. You know, the machine sees when we show up, how often do we go do certain things? If we have repeated mistakes, how many times do we talk to our supervisor? And when you have all that data, in theory, you can actually build machine learning uh, uh, models that explain, you know, segments of people, what kind of mistakes do they make? And therefore, what learning do they need? What supervision and support do we need? Do we need to take them on to, you know, we need to take them, tell them to go a little slowly for a, for a little bit of time. 
if you think about it, it's really hard to do with 100,000 people, right? I mean, it, it, typically what you would do is that everybody has a supervisor, but now even the supervisor doesn't have full visibility. Can't keep up, yeah. But, but the machine might actually have full visibility and the machine might actually tap on the supervisor's shoulder and say, that guy is going to burn out in like two weeks. Uh, you need to take, take that guy aside and do a little bit of something. And so computation, machines will actually help us make the most of the talent that we have. Um, another computation is go find the talent where you need it. Right now we have very big shifts of, of volumes in which we have clients who immediately, you know, suddenly need certain things done. We can actually move people from one part of the organization to the other, as long as we understand their profile and the gap to the new uh, type of job that they will need to do. But the machine will be able to say, you can take this 200 people and retrain them in a matter of two weeks because they have all the skills and that skill typically doesn't take all that long to get to the next level. So this is fabulous, I think. Gianni, you know, it's fascinating speaking with you. Look, you're an innovator by profession. You're a researcher in the work you do with MIT. You are a practitioner in all of the stuff that you've done with me that I've been able to see. And you're a thought leader in that you're thinking ahead of some of the problems that we're coming across and yet more to see. And across all of that, it's been really fascinating to hear your perspective on, as, I, as you said, it focus on four C's and use that as a constructive framework for how we take the next steps forward, trying to rebound out of this current situation we're in. And I want to make sure I don't get this wrong, but you said curation is really important and think about that as an enterprise. Think about connecting the dots and the information, people and, and points of views. Think about collaborating synchronously so that we can actually capture the beauty of this style of working in an in a, in a entirely different world. And then really use the computational power of the engines to be able to scale up the collective intelligence and bring that to bear in new and different ways. And I know that digital professionals across the globe um, appreciate hearing that perspective and, and hopefully will benefit from it. You know, this is a discussion that can take much longer. I'm sure part of this will continue on on LinkedIn, but uh, uh, Gianni, just want to take a minute and say thank you for joining us today. And I look forward to an ongoing discussion on this. Thank you. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. All right. And to my audiences, thanks for joining in. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.